It really is an honor to achieve 1 million subscribers, and it's a part of me to give back to the community. So this video is going to be a review of one of my favorite books ever, Learned Optimism. But it's going to be reviewed by the YouTube channel Everyday Life Skills. I think it's a great review, and if you enjoy the video, go ahead and check out Everyday Life Skills videos. Hope you guys enjoy this and learn something. Hello everyone, Everyday Life Skills here. In this video, I'm going to be animating for you one of my favorite self-help books, Learned Optimism by Martin Seligman. But first, I wanted to thank Practical Psychology for having me here. It really is an honor to present to you guys. Without further ado, here we go. In an experiment, they took two dogs and put them in two different cages. One being a cage with an electric shock that goes off when the dog tries to escape, and the other being a normal lock. When the dog with the normal lock tries to escape, he's successful. When the other dog with the electric shock tries to escape, he gets shocked. After a few unsuccessful shocked attempts, he just sat back in the corner and gave up. They then took these two same dogs and put them in the same cage with no shock. The dog in the previous cage with no shock got up and escaped the cage with no hesitation. However, the dog that was in the previous cage with the shock, because in the first situation he wasn't able to leave the cage without getting shocked, he simply doesn't even try to get out, even though he can if he wanted to. And this is what is called learned helplessness. You probably know someone or is that someone who acts like this helpless dog, pissing away the prime years of their lives due to their pessimist thinking. People who are pessimists believe that bad events are their fault and that it will last a long time, undermining everything else. They feel helpless and may sink into depression. Now the exact opposite of this is learned optimism. Optimism is a hopeful outlook for the future. If you think your tomorrow will be better than today, then you're being optimistic that better things are to come. And this is what Seligman explains in his book. He explains that the reason a lot of people lack an optimistic mindset is because the brain's default mechanism is to think like that of a pessimist. The good thing about all of this is that the brain is like any other muscle in your body. With enough persistence and conditioning, it will grow to be stronger than what it was yesterday. So to sum it all up, Martin Seligman says that it all boils down to persistence. Persistence is staying consistent and continuing on. When you're able to remain more optimistic, you're able to stick with the process and stay on the path that you're trying to achieve and overcome many obstacles on the way than a pessimist person would. When you simply see more opportunities, let's say in a business or a goal you're trying to achieve, you try more things because more opportunities present themselves. So when that happens, do you think that makes you more successful or less successful? Of course it makes you more successful. There is no way you can be unsuccessful if you're super, super persistent and if you're very hopeful. If you are willing to try everything you can to achieve that goal or make whatever it is work, yet still remain hopeful and still remain cheerful and confident. So you can see how important it is to have optimism as a personal trait. Like, I'm sure you can see all the places in your life where if you kept on pushing, you could have done so much more or achieved your goal. How many times have you fell off that diet? How many times have you procrastinated in school or on a project you're passionate about? How many times have you been a victim of your own thoughts and believed that you can't achieve anything bigger than a 9-to-5 corporate job? Martin tells us that, again, the good thing about all this is that it is something that can be cultivated. Just like everything in life, it is a skill you must acquire and learn in order to perform it right. And once you start executing on your plans and you start seeing results, Martin tells us that you then enter a state referred to as flow. But till then, you have to really build up your optimism to get to that level. Martin Seligman gives us this takeaway from the book. That optimism is explained and that the main difference is the explanatory style. The explanatory style is the way that you explain and the way you attach meaning to the stuff that are happening in your life. So, literally, both a pessimistic and an optimistic person can be faced with the same exact challenge. But the question is, what kind of explanation are you assigning to this situation? So, let's try to understand the explanatory styles by using the example of getting a flat tire on your way to work so you can better visualize this and compare it to the way you think about the outcomes in your life. Martin tells us that these three explanatory styles is ultimately what leads to thinking like that of an optimist or that of a pessimist. Explanatory style number one, temporary versus permanent. This asks the question, how permanent is the problem? 
So, let's say you're on your way to work and you get a flat tire. An optimistic person would say, you know, it's just a flat tire. This is not even a big problem. In the grand scheme of my life, it means nothing. I will fix it in a few hours and tomorrow it won't be an issue at all. Now, a pessimistic person would say, oh my god, I got a flat tire. How did this happen? And oh my god, how long is it going to take to fix? And in his mind, he builds it up as if it affects his whole entire life as if it is permanent and he has no way out. And when you think a problem is permanent, you simply block all resources of changing it. You're basically powerless and a victim, because there is nothing that you're looking forward to. So, it only makes sense that the optimistic person who can limit the problem and contain it to a small degree will be much better and much more resourceful in such situation. The second explanatory style is pervasiveness, which pretty much concerns how widespread something is. How much of my life is affected by this problem? This asks the question, will this underline everything? How pervasive is this and how much does it affect my life? So let's say an optimistic person would say, you know, it's just a flat tire. All it affects is now and today. I mean, yes, I'll be late for work and I might miss that 8 a.m. meeting, but it's okay. It's just work. I can make it up. It's not like my life and health and relationship is in jeopardy. Now, a pessimistic person, on the other hand, allows their negative thoughts to spread like freaking cancer. And now what was a local problem, which was this flat tire, becomes a global problem and it affects his whole entire life. He tells himself, now this flat tire means that I'll be late for work, um, which means that my manager might fire me or yell at me. And that's going to make me very, very angry, which then will cause me to go home upset and argue with my wife for being late. And now my whole life is corrupt. All of this over a flat tire. These negative thoughts spread in their mind literally like cancer. The third and final style is personalization, which pretty much asks how personal is this problem? So, for an optimistic person, whenever there's a problem, like a flat tire, he would tell himself, you know, I'm not responsible for this problem. And when something good happens to him, he takes credit for it. For example, they would say, okay, um, I got a flat tire, you know, it was just bad luck. I just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and drove over a nail. It's not my fault. And when something good happens, like a promotion at work, they say, yup, that's me. I worked hard for this all year straight. I earned this. I stayed focused. I beat sale records. I got the promotion through hard work and dedication. This was all me. Now, a pessimistic person would say, dang it, why wasn't I more careful? This always happens to me. And in his mind, he blames himself. And the exact opposite of that, when something positive happens, a pessimistic person tends to be humble and doesn't take credit. Like if they got that same promotion, they would say, oh, you know, the company just needed somebody and I just happened to be in the right place. Um, I mean, anybody could have done it. It wasn't me that attracted that promotion. It was the company. Anybody could have got it. I just happened to be the one. So this is basically the deciding factor between an optimistic and a pessimistic thinker. Just imagine how much this affects your willingness to go out and take action in the real world. When you think you're responsible for good and not bad things, then you're able to act and feel hopeful. And if you're thinking the opposite and not hopeful, you're basically guilting and limiting yourself for no reason. I want you to go ahead and write down five things that you're hopeful about in the next day, the next week, or even the next month or year. It can be anything. Maybe that one vacation you've always wanted to take. Or maybe a relationship you're looking for. Or maybe that promotion that you're trying to get at work. Maybe you want to have all your credit cards eliminated or achieve a certain weight goal, or graduate college, whatever it is, be specific and focus on what really motivates you. And I want you to notice how you feel now, I want you to notice how you feel before doing the exercise, and I want you to notice how you feel when you're finished. If you're like most people, you will feel very, very hopeful and motivated to go out there and execute on your plans. You feel optimistic, fully charged, and happy to be alive. The reason for this is because now your life and goals are right in front of your eyes. You've articulated it in a clear way and now it's right in front of you. You're able to see where you're at and where you can be. And that ultimately gets you back connected with what you're supposed to be doing. And if you're a super, super pessimistic thinker because of the conditioning over the years, don't worry. Optimism is something that can be learned. Optimism is like a dying fire and your awareness of it is the lighter fluid. With enough awareness, that dying fire can burst into a huge flame.
If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and head on over to my channel. I honestly would really love to have you guys there as I will be uploading two videos very similar to this every week. And again, I want to thank Practical Psychology and I want to thank you guys for taking the time to view this video. Till next time, peace.